Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I am Will Lana, partner and investment manager at Trillium Asset Management, and I will be presenting this year's Joan Bavaria Award. Uh, let me just take one moment to thank all my friends at uh, Ceres uh, for an invigorating conference, and congratulations on your 30th anniversary. Your work over the past 30 years has certainly had an impact on the community of sustainability leaders who are gathered here today. The Joan Bavaria Award is named after the late founder of Trillium Asset Management and the co-founder of Ceres and the co-founder of the U.S. Social Investment Forum. This award is an opportunity to celebrate Joan's contribution to our community, and it's also an opportunity to acknowledge the work of others who are breaking new ground in the field of socially responsible investing. The idea behind the Bavaria Award is simple. It's to recognize a unique investor or an NGO leader working to achieve Joan's vision of a more sustainable global economy. The award is presented each year at the series conference. Before I announce this year's winner, I would like to take a moment to thank the, this year's five judges. Those are Mindy Luber of Ceres, Cheryl Smith of Trillium Asset Management, Heike Reichelt of the World Bank, Alan White of TELUS Institute, and Aaron Zolkowski of Walden Asset Management. Thanks to the judges. The judges reviewed a pool of highly accomplished nominees, each of whom demonstrated leadership and commitment to create long-term impact in the capital markets. This year, the judges chose a leader who, whose determination to shift the status quo is certainly reminiscent of Joan's trailblazing spirit. Well, who is our winner? She started engaging with public corporations on issues related to climate and social inequities nearly 20 years ago, and she hasn't quit. Currently, as the director of the Nathan Cummings Foundation's Corporate and Political Accountability Program, she encourages corporate progress on ESG-related issues through a two-sided approach that includes both grant-making and active ownership strategies. Previously, as the Foundation's director of shareholder activities, our winner was an early advocate for foundation-led initiatives on shareholder engagement. She successfully engaged public corporations on topics including energy efficiency, renewable energy commitments, diversity, and ex executive compensation. Her work effectively paved the way for foundations to join the ranks of shareholder advocates. A recent example came in May of 2017, when the Nathan Cummings Foundation, in partnership with West Path Investments, filed a resolution with Occidental Petroleum, asking that company to conduct an assessment of the long-term impacts of climate change on its business. The resolution passed with support from more than 50% of shareholders, including notable firms such as BlackRock and Vanguard, and it marked the very first time a climate risk proposal passed at a major U.S. oil and gas company. This monumental moment would not have been possible without the leadership of this year's winner. Our winner has also led the way for the foundations to focus in on proxy access and board accountability, relating not only to long-term shareholder value, but also to a whole range of environmental, social, and governance issues. By leveraging our best interests of institutional investors, she has supported the Nathan Cummings Foundation in passing proxy access proposals at major companies such as Oracle and Darden Restaurants. Through a combination of leadership in shareholder engagement, proxy voting, and dialogue with corporations, our winner has played an important role in driving forward private sector action on climate, particularly as federal leadership continues to scale back. The drive, enthusiasm, and innovation of this year's winner embody exactly the type of leadership we need to get us there to a just and sustainable future. Those who have worked with her personally say the award could not have gone to a better person, and her dedication, creativity, strength, and practical approach in pushing for higher standards truly represents the meaning of this award. Please join me in congratulating this year's winner of the Joan Bavaria Award, Laura Campos. Thank you so much, Ceres and Trillium Asset Management, for naming me the winner of the 2019 Joan Bavaria Award. 
It's incredibly humbling, both in light of Joan's extraordinary achievements and because of past recipients like Sister Pat Daly, Tim Smith, Bob Massey, and Rich Ferlato, all of whom I have admired for years. I've been incredibly lucky to spend the last decade and a half at the Nathan Cummings Foundation, which, with the support of our board, pioneered the use of active ownership strategies to advance programmatic goals, while helping to protect the long-term value of the companies that make up our endowment. I'm proud to say that our board recently took the bold step of committing to align all of the foundation's assets with its mission. Thank you. I'm also proud to say that as the director of the foundation's corporate and political accountability work, I've been empowered to direct grant dollars to support efforts to ensure that capital markets temper the unfettered pursuit of profits with concern for both people and planet. Like those that give this award and the foundation that I work for, I firmly believe that capital markets must balance economic prosperity with social and environmental concerns. Doing show, so has been shown repeatedly to be not just the right thing to do, but the profitable thing to do over the longer term. Of course, we are hardly unique in this view. The CEO of the world's largest asset manager has called on the chief executives of public companies to exert leadership on urgent social challenges. In doing so, he observed that companies that fulfill their purpose and responsibilities to stakeholders reap rewards over the long term. Companies that ignore them stumble and fail. This last point is vital. Companies that focus solely on short-term profits while ignoring critical issues like climate change, racial justice, and inequality will fail. The American public wants action on these critical issues, and they increasingly think that CEOs of large corporations have a responsibility to take a stand on them. In other words, they recognize that the investors and NGOs in this room can't effectively respond to environmental and social challenges on their own. Corporations must not obstruct progress. Rather, they must join us in fighting for it. Fortunately, some, of, some companies, many of them in this room today, already are. Multiple companies now have ambitious renewable energy targets, thanks in part to Ceres. Efforts led by the Climate Majority Project have helped encourage companies to link executive compensation to progress on GHG emission reduction targets. Work led by members of the Interface Center on Corporate Responsibility has helped to move companies away from financing private prisons and towards better monitoring of their supply chains for prison and diversion program labor. We need more of these efforts. But we know that it's not just companies that will falter if environmental and social risks are externalized and ignored. It's increasingly clear that capitalism itself is threatened by growing inequality, racial inequities, and unchecked climate change. Polls show an increasing number of young Americans prefer socialism to capitalism. Bedrock concepts like the consumer welfare standard and shareholder primacy, which have underpinned our economic system for the last 40 plus years, are now recognized as drivers of some of our biggest economic, social, and environmental problems, and they are actively being rethought. Even ardent supporters of capitalism are calling for reform, with the founder of the world's largest hedge fund recently saying that capitalism must evolve or die. If we are to reform capitalism, head off catastrophic climate change, and address inequality, we must do more than tinker around the edges. At a time when there's growing recognition that capitalism as currently practiced is no longer working, and that fundamental changes must be made to our market system, Joan Bavaria's work shows us the way forward. As Ceres, the Global Reporting Initiative, Trillium, and so many other efforts Joan touched have long recognized, capital markets must balance economic prosperity with concern for society and the environment. Doing so is fundamental to capitalism's continued survival and to ours. Thank you.